One jar, everybody. We are back. It's gloomy and I need something to cheer us up today. So we are going to make some cookies, but they're very special ones. So I'm gonna give you guys just a second. I'm gonna get myself a glass of water because it's one of those, you know, gloomy days. I need to stay hydrated, you know? So one jar, everybody. We are going to make something cheerful today because it's gloomy and raining here and I am needing to do something from the heart. So today we're making some, they're in Italian be called biscotti latte, which is like a biscotti latte is um, like a milk cookie they call it, of course, because it's got milk in it. These are great cookies to dunk in your cappuccino for breakfast. Not too sweet, very simple, big wide like cookies that you just, mm, yum. So I got this, so this recipe in my hometown of Rosetta Valfortore, they're called Pastarello Rosetano. So this is from my friend Maria Pia Goduto, who um, got this recipe from her nonna who is Antonia Converso, or in town, they know her as Zia Antoniette. Okay, so Aunt Antonia, who um, when you are in the village and you're, um, I'll say just gently, older, um, you're everybody's aunt, you're everybody's nonna. So you're nonna so-and-so, but they tend to call out of respect, all the elderly zio or zia, which is aunt or uncle. So these are zia Antonietta's biscotti, um, i pastarello rosatan, as they say in my dialect. Um, but you can just call them milk, Italian milk cookies if you can't say any of those Italian words. It's a very simple cookie, but it does have a particular ingredient. Actually two, one we're substituting and one I ordered. So um, the leavening in this cookie, and yes, you can use some baking powder. But in Italy, it's common to use ammonium carbonate. So they call it ammoniaca. Ammoniaca, I never can even say it right. Um, it's a, a carbonate. It's just another baker's, it's a baker's ammonia is the description. You can order it on Amazon, it's not very expensive. You just use a little bit and you use it just same way you would use a baking powder. So that's one thing. The other regular ingredient, the original traditional ingredient in here that we're not using, we're going to substitute today is sugno, which is basically it's lard. Okay. We are going to use some olive oil in place of that. And it is an acceptable replacement. So we're going to start with, and I'm going to do this in the Italian way. And I will see if I can figure out the actual cups for you. Hold on. I didn't get my measured cups out. So let's see approximately how many cups we are putting in one kilo of flour so this is a nice size recipe because first of all it's a kind of a bigger cookie and you know one or two of them with your morning coffee is kind of nice um so we're going to turn on my my scale so one kilo is 500 no i'm sorry one kilo is a thousand grams so we are going to let's see hold on let's see exactly how much one cup is i tend to forget because you know i use my scale and let's do this approximately nice and level okay so a cup is about this is 142 let's say 150 grams so one cup two cups three cups four cups So it's going to be about seven or eight cups of flour. We're making a big recipe because I'm at 500 and I was at the four cups. So I'm just going. And this is the kind of thing that don't, don't sit here and think that this is way too much making cookies with eight cups because these are the kind of thing that um, they stay well put them in a nice sealed container or in a, or in a, tin, a cookie tin. And these, even if they, they dry out, they, they are so good because they soak up the milk in your coffee. Oh, it's so good. Okay, so we are starting with our 
1,000 grams, approximately eight cups of flour. Well, actually, let me measure one more thing. We are putting in six eggs. Let me get a separate, separate to break the eggs in because I don't want to get eggshells in my cookies. One. And then the last two here, five and six. And luckily, not a single shell. So I had asked Maria Pia how old her grandmother is. She's almost 93, so God bless her, right? And she's in Roseto in Italy right now. Unfortunately, we have a few cases of the virus there, but all the people I know who have gotten it are fine. No one's, you know, been deathly ill, so thank goodness. So anyway, all right, now we are gonna put in, so when I was given the recipe originally, I was told a quarter milk. I'm like, quarter what? Quarter cup, they don't use cups. It's a quarter of a liter, so it's 250 milligrams, which is approximately, because I have the measures on both sides on here, so I did that itself. So it's um, just over a cup, so it's about a cup. Cup of milk, hold on, let me just get my, one of my spoons. I want to get one that I like. I like this is my favorite one. I don't know why it's got a bigger paddle on it. So, okay. And then we are going to add one spoonful if we were using the, the, um, the lard, but which we're not. So we're going to or a small cup, un tazzino, which I'm going to assume is one of my, um, little cups of my espresso cups. So that's probably about a quarter cup. So I'm using extra virgin olive oil because it's a little heavier than would be the plain and I want it to you know, mimic the, um, the lard more. But we don't really need to use the lard, but it does work well. Okay, and then we are going to add in 350 grams of sugar. So I've already got my, my thing on here. All right. So let's see how many 350 grams is. So let's, I will, when I, I am gonna put this recipe on my website blog right away. So I will put all the measurements properly on there. So one cup. Okay. Two cups. So when you think about it, it's really not that much sugar considering we used eight cups of flour. So two cups of sugar, 350 grams. Now, they would say two little packets because they buy the, um, the this, this is brand new as you can see. So I still have the inner, <laughs> hold on. Woo! Wow, that's a strong, <laughs> that's a strong, really strong, ammonia smell. Do not open this up and put it right up to your face. Yes, I know it sounds odd in America that we're going to use an ammonia based baking, but this is baking um, stuff, but just it's strong. <laughs> Boy. Okay. So it says two little packets. So I'm just putting in, you know, cause those packets are small. Um, I'm putting in just a half a teaspoon or two tea in there. Yeah, that's about two teaspoons. Let me just see here real quick. I'm gonna <laughs> read this in here. <laughs> um, okay, that's it. Okay, it doesn't say. So I'm gonna use, um, oh, it's in Italian, check it out. And in English. Okay, anyway, I'm using two teaspoons. Uh, it was actually, I was just shy of a teaspoon there. So, okay, so when you buy this ammonia carb, by carb, ammonium carbonate, baker's ammonia, first we'll make sure it's baker's ammonia. Um, and then don't sniff it up close because it's really strong. I'm mixing it in with the sugar here. And now we're just going to mix this all together. <laughs> I hope you guys are laughing with me because this, that was really, you know, 
I've used this before. I don't know. I don't know why I've never stuck it up to because you can't smell it from the distance, but you can smell it if you stick it up. To, I've never stuck it up to my nose before. Okay, so we are now mixing it all together. <laughs> now you can do this in your mixer, but Zia Antonietta does it all by hand, so we are too. And I did get that confirmed. So, you know what, nothing like getting your hands in the dough. My oven is on to what would be in Italy. 180 degrees, which is approximately 350. My oven runs a little low, so I've got it on like, I don't know, 360 or 370. But you know, your average good temp, full temperature, 150 degree um, oven is 350 degree oven is where you want to have it. So you're going to hear a beep in a few minutes when it gets to them. Um... <laughs> I'm still laughing at that other stuff. Okay, so I'm doing this one here. I'm gonna turn it out on the um, on the on the. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this out onto my floured board here. Oh wow! Isn't this fun? This makes them even that more much more because now as this becomes a traditional cookie that I'm gonna start making one from my town, but not from my, so most of my cookies I've learned in my lifetime were from my, my Sicilian grandmother, because she's the one I grew up with here. Um, but anyway, okay, we need this all together. Make sure that that ammonia is all mixed in. Um, in all seriousness, if you want to do this with baking powder, I am sure, because basically it's just another leavening agent, but I wanted to make it authentic. So that's why I did it this way. And it is, you can't, I, I've never seen the baking ammonia at a grocery store here in the States. Um, I don't know if they have it in Canada or in Australia or any other places that watch me, but all right, now I'm gonna get all this off my hands because it'll stick less, um, but you can order it. I ordered it, I think from Amazon. Um, I'm not sure if Penzi's or, um, Penzi Spices, which I like, or uh, um, King Arthur Flour also sells a lot of spices and baking goods. So those are two places you can check for great um, supplies, um, you know, spices and flours and things like that. So, okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of this on my hands. There we go. When you want to get the dough off your hands, just a little extra flour on your hands helps it come off. So that way you don't wait. Cause you know what? I could have gone to wash my hands, but then I would like probably have a whole cookie and who wants to waste a whole cookie? Okay. Let me get all of this over here. There we go. Now we're starting to get somewhere. There we go. Okay, and here we go. So now I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna wash my hands. They're gonna get sticky again, but I'm gonna get my cookie sheet out because it's right here underneath me. So excuse me one second. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just rip off a piece. Now, what they tend to, they form them in their hands and they make them almost in a rectangular shape. So you can make them as big or small as you want. I'm gonna say, you know, kind of like, it is sticky and it's okay. you know, in the size of, you know, like the palm of your hand, but you can make them as big or small as you want. So you're making it a rectangle. Let's make it kind of round and then rectangular here. And we're just gonna put this on the cookie sheet. Now they do poof up, they get these, and they're gonna be nice and big. Again, if you wanna make them smaller, but this is like a breakfast, typical breakfast cookie. 
So, now, I don't know if this is the exact consistency it's supposed to be. I'm gonna put a little flour here just to touch my fingers to it to make it easier to handle. But I'm making it into, yeah, dust your fingers with a little flour and I've got a nice rectangle here. So I'm just gonna put three across because I know that they're gonna get big. And the picture I saw of the ones that were made, some of them were perfect and some of them definitely looked like they had run into each other and were kind of, you know, had the rough edges, which is just proof of the love that they were made with by hand. So, you know, and as big of a recipe as this is, this isn't gonna make, um, you know, 100 cookies. These are gonna be kind of big fat cookies. Actually, that one might be a little big. Let's take a little off. <laughs> So you want them, like I said, in a rough rectangular shape because then you've got this nice big cookie to dunk. So, oh, I can't wait. You know what we are gonna do? I'm gonna make a cappuccino um, once these are in the oven. I don't know how long. That's the only thing she didn't tell me, which is typical because basically you cook things till they're done. That's the normal way to cook. You know, cookies, always keep an eye on them. And if you're ever making cookies, it's not like a cake where you can stick it in the oven and come back half an hour later. No, cookies, if you're making cookies, you better stay in the kitchen and stay nearby because that's just the nature of the beast. But they're done quick and then you're done. And, uh, and that's that. All right, I'm finding my, finding my bearings here. Getting my nice rectangles. Now, once these are made, I'm supposed to send a picture to my friend Maria, Maria Pia in Roseto, because we're gonna see if they came out like her nonnas, at least looks wise. I'll be able to tell because I've eaten these before. And one more. So we're gonna fitting nine on my cookie sheet here. So they're kind of, like I said, they're kind of big cookies. Little, that one's a little small. Add a little extra piece of dough. When you wanna add some dough, just add it to the bottom. It'll all kind of cook in. Okay. So this is what my tray looks like. They're nice and stuck to the tray. So let's put them in and let's see how long they take to cook. This I'm gonna cover. Um, and come back to afterwards. See, this is what, instead of wasting plastic, I don't need to wrap it in plastic. I can just cover it with a bowl. Like I said, this is my measuring bowl um bowl um so just gonna leave it there it's nice and sealed down it keeps it from drying out um and also doesn't waste plastic so there you go so that's how you make the pasta luruzatan we're gonna see what they look like when they come out because it's not shouldn't take more than you know 10 15 minutes we're gonna chat for a few minutes i'm gonna wash my hands first though don't go anywhere you know i just kind of just want to stand here and wait for those to come out i'm like so excited flour hey i didn't make too well made a little bit of a mess not not too horrible today so um i know a lot of people are starting to get anxious about this coming winter and what's going on with the virus and everything um i want you to not worry um i really think that um, you know, just like everything else in life, this too shall pass, but we have to stay strong. We have to, whether, whether it's real or fake, whether it's bigger than it is or not as big as they say, whether it's conspiracy theory or politics or not, um, it doesn't matter because people really are getting sick. It doesn't matter if the numbers are skewed. Um, this is real. It's just, okay, so the numbers may be off but the virus is real right now in my village of rose de valfortore um 
in Puglia, they spent the first six months truly blessed with not a single case. But we do have a small old folks home, a nursing home in our village that was just built and opened uh, a year or so, year or two ago, I guess two years now, because I wasn't there for a whole year. Um, and uh, some of the workers there got sick and, and unfortunately infected you know, members of the, the home and then their families out in town. So now we have 20 or 30 cases in the village. Um, and we only have a village of, you know, like maybe 1100. So they're being very vigilant. They're all on lockdown again, the whole town pretty much. Um, some of the bars even closed for, you know, who closed for a week or two. Um, everybody's just trying to do the best they can to stay safe this winter. And, you know, we've learned that this thing does grow in the cold weather. So we haven't had a full winter yet with it. We start, we kicked in here in, in like, you know, January, February. So we didn't get started with the cooler weather in November last year. So in October last year, I was in Italy. Oh, if only I had gotten quarantined there, but you know, then I wouldn't have moved to my new house and have my new kitchen and, you know, kind of just be out of New Jersey where it's more crowded and more crazy. So, um, we all have to be smart and not give up. There's a documentary um, about the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. Um, and you know, it was only, it was called the Spanish flu because that's, there the, Spain was the first country to like acknowledge it. Okay, so it was going around and apparently a lot of the American military had it. I haven't watched the documentary yet. My mom watched it and told me about it. So I'm giving you a little bit of second hand, but watch it. Um, and it's amazing. She said how many parallels there are between how everybody reacted to that one and how we are today. If only we had all watched that documentary at the beginning of this and learned from it, then we would kind of be like, all right, fine. It's going to last this long. Let's suck it up and kill it, you know? Now we still get the flu, but we have, you know, vaccines. Not everybody takes them, but that's okay. But we've also, um, you know, we've learned from it. We know how to handle it and all that kind of stuff. So, and people still die from the flu, but not in the numbers that they did that first time it really kicked and, and hit here. So I'm going to take a peek at the cookies because, you know, talking about heavy stuff, I want to talk about something light and fluffy. They're poofing up a little bit. So um, we shall see. But anyway, so what I'm gonna tell you guys is let's spend this winter together. Stick with me. We're gonna do lots of things. We are going to start making gifts from the kitchen really soon so that you can try them once before you make them as gifts. Cause you know, you gotta try everything. Um, never ever serve something you haven't tasted first. See, this is cool because I can make something I've never made before and I'm the first one to taste it and I'm not serving it to you so I can tell you if it came out bad. But um, try these things. Like these cookies would be a great idea to give as a gift. You put a, um, some in a cool bag and then what you do is you give the fixins for cappuccino. So you could maybe get some good espresso coffee. You could get um, some espresso or cappuccino cups. You gotta have these with cappuccino better than with espresso because you know, you gotta dunk a couple cookies in the bigger breakfast milk. So a couple cappuccino cups, maybe an espresso pot and some coffee and, um, and some of these cookies. What a great gift that idea that would be. It's useful. No, I'm gonna encourage you guys, do not give gifts that are just a thought. You know, just a thought is usually, oh, um, look at this cool mug or look at this, you know, like that says you're the best friend or blah, blah, you know. We've all got, but if you're doing like a set like this, a couple cappuccino mugs or, and actually cappuccino cups are not mugs. They're not huge. Um, they're like an average size cup. Let me show you my favorite one. This is my favorite cappuccino cup. Of course I got it in my region in Italy in Puglia. So this is typical of the ceramics with the little blue flowers and the rooster on there. But look at it compared to this big mug. It's, Look at the size difference. This is good for tea. You're drinking lots of it, but you don't need that much milk in the, you know, you need quarter to a half a cup of milk in your cappuccino at most. It's not so much 
that it's bloating you. Like you don't go to Starbucks and get a 20 ounce cappuccino because it still has the same amount of coffee in it. Even if you get a double, you're quadruple the milk. So some nice little cute Italian cappuccino cups that are actually the appropriate size for coffee for breakfast. Let's make our gifts useful. Make edible gifts, make um, drinkable gifts. We will make again, because not everybody was here back then when I did it the first time. We're gonna make some limoncello. We're going to make some coffee liqueur. We are going to make, um, I don't know what else. We're gonna come up, we're gonna make a couple different drinks that you can make that you can serve in cool little bottles and hand those out with maybe a set of little shot glasses or something. Give gifts that are useful and enjoyable. Um, that way when you go visit that friend, they can pull out that limoncello that you made with the little shot glasses you gave them and you all can have a nice after dinner digestivo, digestive drink. So let's see how our cookies are coming. Oh, they're getting bigger. Okay, they're getting bigger. They're not hard, they're still a little soft. I know, I'm, I'm see, watch pot never boils. So, hmm, you know, let's make a cappuccino. You know, I'm not gonna move the camera right now, but I'm just gonna go over here and make an espresso. All right, because I have a big old espresso machine over there. But this is the coffee that I use. Now this is individual pods, let me show you. This is Cafe Borbone, I get it out of you can, uh, there's a, you can order from straight from Cafe Borboni in Fairfield, New Jersey. You can call them up and they'll ship to you, to you directly. And they're really nice. You can get this on Amazon, but they'll ship it to you the same price, so you might as well. So these nice little, mm, I know that this is gonna be really good with those cookies in a few minutes. So let me just really quickly, today we're wasting a little time. So normally I'd put my little half a cup in here. Now, I have a frother on my cappuccino machine, my espresso machine, but you can also warm your milk, and if you get one of these, so this cute little mug comes with this thing here. This is a, a little mesh thing, and this is a frother. So, what you do is you take this and you pump it up with your warm milk, which I'm gonna just put here on the stove real quick. So, we're gonna froth up the cookie, the froth up the milk, so right now it's just plain old milk in here. So we hold this down tight and then just pump some air into it. Oh yeah, now the key to making a good cappuccino is don't pour it immediately. Let it, let your froth set. So if you're using a machine, make your froth you're frothing, froth your milk first, let it set on the side while you then make the, pour the espresso. If you do this, same thing, make your froth, set it aside for a minute, then get your espresso. Now, if you're planning on having a lot of people over, get a stovetop pot, and if you're making cappuccino for breakfast and you're making it for everybody, the stovetop pot works the best right now. I just make it for me in the morning. Sometimes me and Pasquale, he goes back and forth on what kind of coffee he likes. So if I'm making it just for me, I use my pods. Otherwise I would use a whole pot because that would make, you know, three, six, nine espresso. Hold on. Okay, so I have my cafe, my little tazzino di cafe, my little cup of coffee. And now, when you take this off, watch this. When I lift this up very carefully, look at the beautiful foamy froth that's on there. See that? So you can, normally I use this to pull it out, but I wanted to show that too, let me put it in. So I let the, the milk come out first and then I pull out the froth. So I've got this nice white fluff on top. Mm. Yum. So we shall see in a minute if my whiff of ammonia <laughs> was too much or not. Um, that was the only question I didn't ask her because she said a bustina di ammoniaca, which is the, a little packet, but I'm not exactly sure how many grams are in a packet. So I went with a teaspoon because it seems to be, I went a little light on the teaspoon though. So I will give you the exact 
um, amount when I write out the recipe. <laughs> Don't sniff the ammonia. Now, you know what I like to do? I'm gonna show you something. You know what I like to do with my cafe? I don't put sugar in my coffee, but I've shared this before and I'll share it again. When I was a kid, my dad's restaurant, now this is, I don't know if this, honestly, I've never looked it up. I don't know if this is a typical Italian thing or not, but my dad's restaurant, we used to take the coffee cups and we would dip them in molten sugar. So these were the cappuccino cups, not the coffee, American coffee cups, but the cups we used for cappuccino. We would take and we would melt sugar in a frying pan and we would dip the cups in molten sugar. And then, you know, sit them up and, and I have a little teeny weeny weeny two dot scar right here one time. I got two little drops of molten sugar on my finger. Oh my God, it burned. But anyway, um, so what it was when you took that sip of your cappuccino, you'd get a little bit of sweet flavor on your lips. It wasn't like putting sugar in your coffee, but it was like it was come the you know, the warmth of the coffee was going over the sugar but you would get that little sweetness on your lips. And I don't know, it was just something about it. I don't know if it's just a memory of my childhood or just how good it actually tasted. So I don't melt sugar, my coffee cups and sugar. What I do is I take a little bit of the dark brown, the, I like the like, turbinado sugar, take a little teeny bit and I just sprinkle it around like on top of the foam, just a little, it's literally like a pinch of sugar. But when I get my sip, mm, I get like a couple granules of sugar and it's kind of for me reminiscent of the coffee cups that I grew up with at the restaurant. So just thought I'd share that. But if you're ever having a party and if you have a bunch of coffee cups that match, um, now the real skinny, thin rimmed, you need something that's going to have kind of like a ceramic that's going to be a little thicker here because I don't know, I'd be worried about putting something really thin and something that hot. I mean, they take coffee, so I guess they're fine. But I would do it more in, in a cup that's, you know, a little thicker. Like, um, these are my kind of restaurant style cups. This is my cafe ware, which I bought years ago and I love it. And, uh, but this has got a thicker rim. And then you just, you know, dip them in. And they get like a little, you know, just down from the side. And it's just awesome. So let me check my cookies. think that they're about ready. I'm going to wait for them to have just a little bit more color, but the bottoms look like they're starting to get a little color. I just want the tops to have. Actually, you know what? Let me put them on the top. That's a good cheat, and the top they'll get a little browner really quick. In the meantime, salute. Have a cup. I know it's, it's close to lunchtime. This is not the time for a cappuccino unless, let's see, unless you're watching in California, or in Italy, it might be, but you know, cappuccino is a breakfast thing. Cappuccino is not an evening drink. In fact, it's not a rest of the day drink at all. When you're in Italy, this is what you have the rest of the day. This is what you have for breakfast. They're very specific. And you know, if you actually follow that, you feel good and you feel fine. And if during the course of the day, you need a little pick me up, one of these is perfect. Let's talk about coffee and caffeine for one second. Do you know that these two things, everybody thinks this has so much more caffeine in it than coffee. It's how you drink it. This cup and this cup are not the same. If you have espresso in this size compared to a coffee in this size, it has more caffeine. But espresso is usually you have it. I was about to say is usually drunk, drank, drink, drunk. Is usually drunken, <laughs> drunken. Is usually drunk out of one of these little. You usually drink espresso. <laughs> My grammar today. What the heck? Um, is usually in one of these little cups, and coffee's in one of these. So you're drinking coffee all day out of these cups. You're getting more caffeine than this. Okay, but in the morning. If you have one of these, which has one of these in it, it's a perfect wake up, but it's not a drive you crazy kind of thing. You have one of these in the afternoon, maybe even one in the evening. You're still not having as much coffee as you do when you have these size cups all day long. A little bit of coffee and coffee is known to have antioxidants in it. So a little bit of coffee is actually good for you. 
but a lot of coffee, a lot of caffeine, keeping your system revved up all day long is not good for you. You gotta, you have to enjoy it and you gotta still spend time relaxing during your day. Let your body relax. You take these, you know, you have one of these in the morning, one of these in the afternoon after you've had your big dinner and you've had your little 10 minute nap and all that kind of stuff. And then this is a perfect little pick me up. So, all right, let's check. I have a feeling that we can try a, a, a cookie dunked in this cappuccino. Look at these, huh? Let's get a spatula and try them out. <clears throat> this one looks perfect. Let's see the bottom. Oh, look at that. It's a beautiful golden on the bottom. Hmm. It's warm. So I think I'm not going to dunk the whole thing. I'm just going to cut a piece off here. Let's look at the inside. Hmm. Smells like a whoosh, hot. Okay, but I'm going to. A little dunkaroo here. So you can see, mm, it's the perfect breakfast cookie. Um, very simple, not a heavy flavor in it because you know there's like no vanilla or almond or anything. It's a very simple milk cookie. Look at, it's got just a little bit of, you know, sponge to it. Um, the one that's not wet. It's got a little, whew, hot. It's got a little sponge to it, but the edges are crispy. But yet the inside has got enough fluff that it just soaks up the milk in your cappuccino. So here we go. This is our wonderful Italian breakfast cookie, Pastarella Rusatana. So if you're of Rusatana heritage and watching, salute. Mm. This is breakfast. It's like, instead of having some toasted white bread with butter on it, have a little bit of one of these or with cinnamon sugar, which of course I do love. But this is like a perfect breakfast. One of these big biscuits, as they would call them, biscotti, pastarella, um, and dunk it in your cappuccino. It's a perfect start to your morning I don't like heavy breakfast. I used to eat a lot of heavier breakfasts. I went through a stretch where I was bigger breakfast all the time and I didn't feel as good all day long. I feel best when I have a light breakfast and a nice big lunch. So anyway, here you go. This is your recipe for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, use these, find a traditional recipe from your town, from your heritage, from your family and make a traditional recipe this week. Okay, and here's one if you're of Southern Italian, um, Southern Italian heritage or especially of Rosatan heritage. Um, and even if you just like Italian cookies and having them for breakfast, enjoy this. So I'll have the recipe up on my blog later today. This one I'm gonna jump on right away. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Mwah. Ciao.